Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in to this brief message today. This is the final message in a series of four short messages entitled Joyful Jubilee in celebration of 70 years on the throne for Her Majesty the Queen this year. In the first message, we looked at royal promises, looking back to the coronation, and then we looked at royal prerogatives, those powers which lie in the Queen's hands alone. The last little message talked about royal palaces and looked at the God who came down and dwelt amongst men. And then today, we're going to look at the theme of royal power. Royal power. I don't know if any of you have ever been to the Tower of London. And if you have, uh, then the star attraction at the Tower of London is the crown jewels themselves. I remember when I worked at Buckingham Palace, when I worked for the royal household, uh, there was a, a royal event coming up and the crown jewels were transported from the Tower of London to uh, one of the staterooms in Buckingham Palace. And we, as household staff, were given a, a sort of private viewing uh, of the crown jewels in this uh, remarkable setting. And it was wonderful to see them. These are the symbols of royal authority in our country. Uh, really, the, the, the power and the authority of the Queen is vested in these items. So you have the crown, a number of different crowns in fact, and then you have a scepter, this sort of handled uh, rod, highly decorated rod, which symbolises power, and then an orb, an orb. The orb, the scepter and the crown, which all together make up the crown jewels of the United Kingdom and symbolise royal power. But you know, there are limits to royal power. The Queen has many powers, and we looked at that when we covered royal prerogatives. There are things that only the Queen can do, things that lie in her power, and yet there are limits to royal power. Now, throughout history, there have been kingdoms, nations with a monarchy, uh, where the King or Queen in charge has had a much greater degree of power, where they have been dictators, where they can really um, rule uh, just exactly according to their wishes and that, that the life and death of their subjects is in their hands. And that's not the case in the United Kingdom today. We live in a constitutional monarchy where the monarchy is limited in its powers by parliament and by all sorts of other checks and balances. But even the most powerful king, even the king who has uh, the greatest power, is limited, is limited. Back in the 1300s, uh, there was a king of Britain called King Canute. King Canute, he was a Scandinavian, he was king of Denmark and Norway as well uh, over that period. And he was a man who didn't suffer from low self-esteem. He thought that his royal power had no limits at all. And he said, look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the shore and I'm going to set up my throne on the shore and I'm going to sit there in my royal robes and I'm going to command that the tide doesn't come and wet my feet, that the tide stops where I tell it to stop. And in his pride and his pomp, he went down, he set his throne uh, out there on the shore with his royal robes on, etc. And sure enough, no matter his pronouncements and his commands, the tide came in as it always does. There are limits to royal power, and he learned it that day with a, a wet pair of shoes, I can imagine. So even the greatest royal power has its limits. But we've thought about the Lord Jesus over these four talks and we've thought about his power, his power as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You know, his power has no limits. His disciples had to learn that. They had to learn the true power of this man that they had followed, Jesus of Galilee, Jesus of Nazareth. And he was, in fact, and is today the son of the true and living God, God himself. There's a remarkable story in Mark's Gospel. The New Testament begins with four biographies of Christ. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. We call them the Gospels, which means the good news. And here in Mark's Gospel in chapter 4, there's a story that many of you may be familiar with. And what happens is that the disciples go out with the Lord Jesus on a small boat and they cross the Sea of Galilee. And while they're going across in the Sea of Galilee, a storm arises and the boat's in difficulty. But Jesus is asleep on a cushion in the boat and the disciples wake him up to alert him to the distress that's all around them. And he says this, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. 
He said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this? Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Friends, here we have the power of Jesus Christ on display for his disciples to see. And we're still reading about it now, over 2,000 years later. King Canute thought that he could stop the tide coming in, and yet he was powerless to do so. The Lord Jesus, with three simple words, peace, be still, brought the whole of the Sea of Galilee and the weather system to a complete standstill at the power of his word. Royal power, true royal power, lies in the hands of God alone. And Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is God himself. Now, when the Lord Jesus came to this world, he was not recognised. The opening chapter of the Gospel of John, the fourth biography of the Lord Jesus, says this, he came to his own, that means to his own people, the Jewish people, and they didn't receive him. They didn't receive him. And you know, the only crown, going back to those symbols of royal authority, the only crown that mankind gave to Christ, the true king, was a crown of thorns that the Roman soldiers forced onto his head uh, before he was led away to be crucified. In fact, the Jewish people said, stirred up by their leaders on that day of his crucifixion, away with him. We will not have this man to rule over us. They would have anybody but Christ, the true king. Now, I want to ask you a personal question today. Would you be prepared? Would you be prepared to bow the knee to Jesus Christ as king? Would you be prepared to recognise him as your Lord and saviour? You might say, but if he was so powerful, what was he doing hanging on a cross like a common criminal? Well, there he was paying the penalty for your sin and for mine. God in his love had provided a way, has provided a way still, for every man, woman, boy and girl to be saved through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. There on the cross, he was willingly giving up his life. He wasn't a victim. There he was giving up his life to be a ransom for many, to pay the price for salvation so that people like you and me can be saved and know him as our personal king today. He has the power to forgive. He's the only one who has that power. The queen doesn't have the power to forgive. The church doesn't have the power to forgive. I don't have that power. You don't have that power. It lies in the hands of only one person and that is Jesus Christ himself who loved us enough to go all the way to the cross knowing everything that you would have to pass through there because of love for us, despite knowing everything we've ever done that's wrong, he went to the cross to pay the penalty for our sin. Will you put your trust in him? Will you put your faith in him? Turn to him and take him as your personal saviour and king. Thank you so much for listening.